Welcome. Welcome to World University and Schools News or monthly business meeting, I should say. Uh, it's um, Saturday, July 16th, 2022. Uh, how are you doing uh, otherwise? How's the weather by you? Everything seems to be okay. Good, good, good. Uh, glad that uh, the WUAS my FTB account generation process is proceeding and that we're in after many years to the my FTB account uh, for World University and School. What do you think about that? I don't know. I don't know why it takes so long to do everything in California. <laughs> Way too complicated process. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. Way too complicated process, I um, um, perhaps. On the other hand, uh, my one hypothesis is that they're iterating um, the database developers at the California Franchise Tax Board, and that this uh, could partly, th this uh, involved process could partly have been uh, due to um, even security procedures, but also um, uh, the two entities that we have and making them work together in their database system, as well as with the federal government, uh, because world universities and schools of 501c3. What do you think about that? I think the same things would affect every other state. And I don't know of any state that's had as many problems as we have in California. <laughs> so there's something wrong there. <laughs> yeah, it's um, we became uh, an exempt legal entity in the state of California in 2010, and it's 2022 now. So uh, glad we became a uh, for-profit general stock company legal entity along the way uh, in California, also in 2017. Um, hard to say how that will all fit together, even with uh, possibly world university and school or the WS corporation, uh, the second legal entity in California, possibly collaborating, partnering with Stanford Mind Pi cryptocurrency to end poverty and listing on the new Silicon Valley long-term stock exchange in terms of databases. Uh, thoughts about that? That's in complex system. No, we've just been waiting a long time, so. Yeah, just yeah. Continue to wait. All right, sounds uh, like a plan. Um, so uh, let's get to the agenda items, if you're game. Okay. Um, agenda item one. Um, it's possible to matriculate in now for World University and School four years free CC4 OCW.MIT.edu centric bachelor degrees by emailing meeting at World University and School, but particularly by beginning just now on your own to take CS First with Google uh, at dot com at World University and School for a free uh, initial programming course, learning the Scratch programming language. One question is how to uh, build student engagement, Larry. Um, this is a, a remarkable opportunity free course to matriculate in for a free four-year bachelor's degree. Uh, how do we reach out to more students, do you think? Well, I don't know. It doesn't seem like anybody who's amenable to our reaching out is interested in doing any of the work. I'm rather discouraged by, we keep talking about motivated, good scholars, et cetera, but the only people we seem to attract are weak. Interesting. So yeah, that's just, that's just a general observation. It would be um, your first comment about um, attracting people who will do the work uh, made me think of um, already being in Wikidata, Wikibase, Wiki um, Media, uh, and, and that to some degree, World University and School has people doing the work. On the on that wiki side, um, ama yeah. amazing. That's that's an accomplishment. Um, 
Okay. <laughs> I think, <laughs> but that's not but making they're not the students. They're not the students where you are talking about. Though. Right, right, right. I, I mean, then the the courseware on the Google side, um, people made the CS first with Google at World University and School, and it's Creative Commons for licensed. People are doing the work there. Uh, how? You, I guess one question with regard to even Sidwell Friends High School in the Washington D.C. area is uh, um, beyond if we could uh, find a cohort of recent alumni from Sidwell Friends. We haven't heard back from them. Your suggestion last business meeting. Yeah. Um, and if even Sidwell Friends could um, high school, the, the, the educators, the teachers could uh, let Google know what their <laughs> graduating 18 year old students might want um, in terms of uh, a first year of courseware in the Google uh, CS first with Google ecosystem, maybe building uh, with uh, on cc4ocw.mit.edu, that could be an entree to <clears throat> all the high school uh, counselors, all the high school graduating seniors in the U.S. <clears throat> with three degrees. Uh, how do we get there? Or what do you think about that? Well, I, I realize now, you should realize that all the schools, all the high schools are no longer in session. And so I don't think anything is likely to happen for quite a few months. Yeah, um, I agree uh, there. Um, also, uh, we haven't heard back from Mwende Avande in Cameroon, Africa, um, about his interest in matriculating this September yeah. 1st. Um, for example, he having finished the CS first with Google at World University and School course this past. Have you heard that he finished it? I, I don't remember that detail. Uh, yes, um, it appeared that he did. Um, that, that's CS first with Google at World University and School um, works with standards um, that might eventually be accreditable. But there's always um, sort of questions. How can we know? How can we be sure that he did finish it, even if yeah. it looks like he finished it? Um, what if he had uh, someone helping him in Cameroon, um, for example? So I guess waiting to you hear. You never can test for that. What's that? Fact, you, don't, you can't ever be sure of that. I mean, I remember a situation many years ago in St. Louis where a, the professor walked in to take a final exam. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which he promptly let the thing happen, then gave the guy an F. <laughs> in <the> world, <laughs> in in-person class, you could let somebody else substitute. Well, that happens. <laughs> right, right, right. Interesting. Um, I uh, wonder whether Google could code for uh, such interest, and. Um, whether uh, this could develop in other languages, uh, particularly in India, for example. I was just in a uh, India Google Education Group meeting this morning, getting up at 5 a.m. Pacific time. And they were talking about updates in Google Apps and Google, Ed, Google some Google for Education uh, programming from Google. Um, I've inquired with them about interest uh, by their students in um, free bachelor's degrees. And uh, I would think that Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google and Alphabet, could be um, a potential collaborator here too. Uh, but I didn't hear back from Vishal Varya, the sort of leader of the session I was in this morning, a teacher in a high school in Ahmedabad. But another woman, Narjeet Kaur, uh, also was holding a session at the same time in the Punjabi language. And uh, 
also holding another session at a different time over three days on a boot camp in Google Education. So I'm curious if um, there might be some approaches there and with other languages uh, also, such as Punjabi, um, that could lead to cohorts uh, working through a Google um, Google courses uh, with MIT Open Courseware courses. Uh, thoughts about all of that? Well, I mean, it's possible, but obviously they're in charge, not us. So, got to just follow on with what's happening. Right. So that would be with, um, for example, uh, potentially Peter Norvig and Google, um, I would think, and Sundar Pichai. Uh, So moving on uh, in the agenda, um, glad that uh, Paul Anderson, uh, professor at George Fox University outside of Portland, Oregon said, congratulations to Sidwell Friends and Scott McLeod uh, on June 12th, 2022, and possibly regarding Sidwell Friends interest in free bachelor's degrees that would be CC4 open courseware centric. Uh, that would be possibly in the CS first with Google ecosystem. And as you suggested last business meeting, uh, waiting to hear back from Sidwell Friends or from Friends Association for Higher Education has merit. Uh, any further thoughts there? No, if people won't respond, there's not much you can do. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. You just gotta wait. Huh, interesting. Um, great. So. Agenda item two, uh, I, 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 I'm coming to that conclusion. I continue to reach out with language uh, to various people uh, in these regards. Um, uh, agenda item two, uh, so what would people like to see in their country's world university and school as a major online university? Um, and for free degrees, in that country's main languages and as wiki schools. Uh, one uh, focus might be Narjeet Kaur's video recordings, even from today and yesterday. Uh, and, one, and one was about the sustainable development growth goals for the UN, perhaps in Punjabi language uh, regions. Um, and she created some of those resources uh, with these video recordings um, and with a focus on the SDG goals. Uh, any further thoughts about um, how we could reach out to various countries, world, university, and schools? No, how many of you think are actually functioning now? Uh, so, in uh, on the nation states page, uh, I recently at the top added a list in a GDoc uh, spreadsheet of about uh, 207 countries from the Olympics. And yeah, that's just a list, though. I mean, how many of them have active people doing things? There, there. There are about 75 wiki pages, I would estimate, uh, with countries that are the beginnings of universities. But uh, okay. you cut out on the magic. I heard 70, and then it was blank for a minute. <laughs> there are about the <laughs> there are about 75 wiki subject page wiki okay. universities um, that have All already right. um, a country uh, beginning university, but in English. Um, okay. And that's out of 200 or so. And uh, we just completed the Wikibase, uh, Wikidata, Media Wiki, uh, Wiki um, Media uh, migration journey in the past few weeks. Uh, after getting into Wikidata, partnering with Wikidata in 2015. Um, so, Will more uh, Wikimedians help develop those individual universities? 
uh, at World University in School from those 75? Are people already? Do we have people <laughs> for all 75, estimated 75 World University in School beginning universities in those countries um, already working on it in new ways because of the MediaWiki um, migration journey having been complete? I would say yes. Okay. <laughs> How many people? Um, that's harder to estimate. Uh, yeah, that's always a problem when you're getting volunteers. <laughs> they can be active or inactive. If you're paying them, you can have a little control. But if they're doing it for free, you just have to tolerate whatever gets. Right. The, the um, we, was explore, we were exploring last monthly business meeting, third Saturdays, third Saturdays of the month at 9 a.m., a Ghana World University in school as well as a, a Uganda World University in school. Um, and there's a Wikimedian from Ghana. Uh, I think he's based though uh, in Berlin and he's um, pointing out someone in Seattle a lot on Twitter. Uh, I think her, her, I'm forgetting what her full name is. Ivy is her first name. Um, and uh, he, while he may be paid and could be focusing even on the Dagbani language, um, because that's his first language in Ghana at Wikimedia um, for Wikipedia, uh, it's that kind of um, sort of those sets of developments, perhaps as um, World University and School develops further in Wikidata that will lead to more both possibly paid and volunteer um, from that, those communities and that, that ecosystem. Should we focus that further in any given way? <laughs> well, I don't know how, but it, we, that's about all we can do at this point is encourage them to keep going. Yeah, um, I mean, how one how question uh, gets down to agenda item six or seven or something on the fabricated fabricator ticket system, P H A B R I C A T O R, I think, which uh, Lydia Pincher has been using for years. Uh, and it's to get specific coding projects done in. Uh, Wikidata in Wikibase, um, in Wikimedia, and in various languages. And uh, we could possibly engage the Wikimedia um, fabricator ticket system further, uh, but I'm, I don't have any specific um, ticket items that I am pursuing for World University and School in that ecosystem at this point. Okay. Uh, th th those are all quite technical. And I would like to build a flourishing teacher and learning, uh, teacher and learner conversation um, in our 75 universities that are already existing as wiki um, beginnings of major universities. Um, and is there a way to collaborate further with Wikimedia? I'm skeptical there. Um, to add a new reference to a Wiki subject page as it stands is a tiny bit complicated. Uh, it's just not as easy as adding a URL to a Wikipedia um, little program that creates a reference, for example, of of you, Larry, teaching to uh, a YouTube video about your book on ions, for example. Um, but that could come along as well, but I'm not sure if that leads to flourishing learning and uh, teaching and as a conversation either. Uh, so those are some thoughts about um, further, what would people like to see in their country's world, university and school, and even regarding possibly Wikimedia's paid and volunteer uh, folks um, and some other ideas.
what about uh, WUAS liberal arts education? Uh, MIT professor Raphael Reif tweeted recently about uh, artificial intelligence, AI, and the liberal arts. And it's path to wise, responsible citizenship um, in an AI moment. And it seems like um, both the 2,600 approximate courses, undergraduate and graduate at cc4ocw.mit.edu, um, many of which are not STEM, many of which are STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, could be uh, developed with AI for the liberal arts. Uh, and that liberal arts is a, an approach to education that I think many high schools in the United States uh, even apply, uh, orient themselves toward uh, in focusing their graduating seniors and they're going to college. Um, thoughts about how we might bring MIT open courseware liberal arts together with AI? Um, and uh, make it attractive for graduating seniors at U.S. high schools and around the country, around the world? Well, of course, between the two of us, you're the one who has to do that because I'm obviously in the STEM area. You're the one who's in a liberal arts environment, so <laughs> the ball back to you. <laughs> it, it's long been a, 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 a thought at World University and School. How could we create... A, an initial um, uh, course that would be both inspiring, a little bit like um, Humanities 110, but also um, newly with AI and uh, for writing, learning writing and all kinds of other um, liberal arts foundational uh, philosophical conversation questions. So thanks, well, I will focus. I, I uh, yeah, I know. I'll leave it back on your hands. But reality is, I think we get financial constraints here. People get into this uh, UAS stuff because they think it's the way they can get money, jobs, etc. And then they're not willing to divert off the what they view as the money aspect of STEM into the arts area where they don't think there's that much money. So Interesting. That's, I think, a big hurdle. It's a very big hurdle, and maybe something will come of it with um, this, these new developments with the state of California Franchise Tax Board and with the state of California itself. Um, we've long at World University and School of thought of hiring interns, uh, say um, MIT PhD students in the arts, possibly in the humanities, uh, to teach as graduate student instructors. Um, and at, uh, in, a, in a way maybe that they could also develop AI with uh, artificial intelligence with cc4ocw.mit.edu courses. Um, that's a way to bring money <laughs> together with um, possible uh, uh, people who are interested in educating, possibly interested in researching. Um, and uh, who might have art of coding skills, for example, either building on what MIT has to offer itself or on the um, CS with Google ecosystem. Yeah, that's true. But those kind of people aren't the ones who are attracting at the moment the WUS. The ones we seem to attract, the ones that have no programming skills. They want to get them, but they don't have any at the moment. I think your observation earlier um, that made me think, uh, how do we find a way for um, potentially uh, high schools to ask for what they want, such as Sidwell Friends, from even um, a kind of CS first with Google and with uh, CC40 MIT Open Courseware uh, could be a way to get money, possibly from the state of California, um, 
that for graduate students to begin to code this um, all with artificial intelligence if the platforms were there such as at cs first with google that's my hope what do you think okay well that's one source of money okay uh, maybe we could find some inspired uh, philanthropist who would give us money we are a, a nonprofit at the federal level is this uh wus my ftb account uh generation process proceeds um yep how do we uh, reach out um, to such philanthropists? Uh, what are you, any thoughts there? Yeah, well, you have to know them. They have to know about you, and then that means they have to know you. And so, and we are on the right levels. <laughs> I, I mean, um, I'm appreciating that uh, we have a track record of videos, video recordings, uh, okay. My uh, thinking further um, with regard to philanthropists knowing World University and School, it's partly knowing the platform and knowing the legal entities being in place. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if they can know us through guidestar.org that we're a 501c3 um, and that uh, they that that irs federal us legal entity relates to actually two state of california legal entities that's a kind of knowing uh, that might lead to uh, such philanthropists being uh, more interested in uh, donating and making charitable con con uh, contributions to world university and school what do you think yeah, except within the philanthropic community, at least a little bit that I've been connected with, they want you to have a 30 second elevator speech ready in hand so that you get 30 seconds to give convince somebody about you. Uh, that's the environment they work in. It's an environment where the givers are out looking at who to give money to. They're in an environment where the givers try to avoid people asking them. <laughs> I think there is a, a minute long uh, so-called elev elevator talk on um, LinkedIn or something still, or there was for a while. Um, but I think that was from uh, some five, ten years ago. So I'm not sure. Um, well, you might want to look that up and improve it, update it. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, so in planning to code potentially for people in 200 countries and speakers of all 7,151 known living languages, uh, ongoing concerns about how to protect uh, students and people and even all 7.9 billion people regarding abolition. It's an ongoing focus. MIT Blossoms, uh, which is a Twitter feed, posted something about informers on campus uh, that's recently that's one approach um, how to plan for from the beginning um, protecting people is an ongoing question um, thoughts and, and with potentially law and law enforcement and also cultural differences in all 200 countries any uh, thoughts about that no uh sounds uh yeah these are interesting um developing questions uh so i think that after the coronavirus pandemic of the past um two years that a lot has changed in american society and maybe that will protect students more uh i hope i hope um agenda item five um is the Fabricator ticket system for Wikimedia in 300 languages as a new coding team for World University and School. Uh, we've talked about that already. Right. Um, there's an example of a Fabricator ticket, um, which uh, 
has to do with Lexeme project, which is one of their uh, uh, linguistic and word oriented projects. Um, great that these projects get done and completed and that the um, perhaps I can start focusing some tickets, um, some requests for specific aspects of technical processes in specific languages. Uh, I'll give that some further thought. Um, agenda item six, added new Chinese languages as wiki schools and eventually for free online cc4ocw.mit.edu centric degrees, added eight languages, um, maybe the largest languages in China out of uh, some 300 languages, I think. Uh, the languages I added um, to the languages wiki subject page are uh, Guo, Guoyu, which is, I think, Mandarin in Taiwan, Mandarin Chinese, Min Chinese, Wu Chinese, um, Cantonese, also known as Yue, um, Jin or Chin Chinese, Gan Chinese, Hakka, um, which is also known as Keja, and Xiang Chinese. The potential for these languages in a realistic virtual earth for languages, uh, such as in Google Street View with Time Slider, Maps Earth, with uh, Google Translate and TensorFlow AI is immense. Uh, because with new technologies and for designing technologies such as robotics, so, would we be able to design robots in the Min Chinese language? Um, even for even the Toyota um, THR3 humanoid robot, uh, which comes with a mass, a, a chair, which is where a, a roboticist and a programmer can sit and potentially code this robot? Uh, could we code it for Chinese and even to do deliveries, uh, for example, at the educational services store in a realistic virtual earth for languages with a realistic virtual earth for robotics? Uh, adding Chinese languages, does that open up a, a horizon in your thinking, Larry, for some of this? Well, if somebody responds and grows it, yes. So that's a way of getting more people involved. Uh-huh. Great. Um, let's uh, see as the um, universities, thanks to the new WS um, migration journey completed uh, into uh, um, Wikidata, Wikibase, MediaWiki uh, grows if we can get more people involved, my hope. Um, agenda item seven. Um, so someone updated a, a reference with some great ideas at Wiki World University and School in the business management section. Uh, this is, I guess you were asking earlier about how many people are involved. Right. Uh -huh. and, and this is, um, I guess, in the English language World University and School and a particular wiki subject page on business management where there's much uh, Sloan Business um, Management School uh, from MIT open courseware posted. And uh, it's by Jeff Hayden. And it was uh, a post I added in 2000, around 2012, I think. He added a, an updated URL and with lots of good uh, thinking about qualities that make a project manager uh, a great leader and interesting sort of quick resource. Uh, it's just one example of wiki teaching and learning. Uh, how do we build such n numbers of edits, Larry? Oh, well, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't have an answer. Uh, how did, um, I don't think that there's any way to find out uh, 
who was behind this edit. Uh, I, the username uh, was not obvious, for example. Um, okay. So uh, cultivating such a community, whether it was a Wikimedia person or someone else is another set of questions. Um, agenda item eight, um, we have a new expertise wiki subject page, um, partly thanks to a conference um, that uh, Jim Sporer and ISIP uh, organized, International Society Service Society of Innovation Professionals um, is roughly the acronym uh, articulated. And um, with uh, some great videos and some great panelist con conversations. Uh, thanks to Jim for uh, and ISIP for organizing this and for holding this. Also, the um, National Science Foundation uh, director uh, of an education program, Alexandra uh, Borhe Media, Meda, I think is her, how uh, is her name gave a presentation. She's very focused on innovation in education um, at the STEM, in the STEM sphere. And uh, she's also, um, interestingly, originally, I think from Brazil, so could possibly uh, be interesting for uh, beginning further the Brazil World University and School for STEM, and potentially in the Portuguese language, as well as with English and from the US federal government's perspective. Uh, great focus on expertise, and maybe we can hire some experts with time. What do you think? Well, perhaps. OK. We need money, that's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, agenda item nine. Um, so could we possibly um, develop careers in collaboration with the US federal government's State Department. Uh, and I'm thinking of um, some a family I met at the Berkeley, California Marina fireworks on July 4th, Independence Day in the US. And the family were all Arabic speakers. And the father's English was pretty good. And they were from originally Yemen, a country in the Middle East. And it um, made me wonder with regard to their seeming to immigrate to the US, how um, World University and School could possibly begin to hire such people by to develop the wiki side of things with uh, in collaboration with the State Department, for example. Um, we would need to structure our own development of wiki communities for open teaching and learning further. Uh, I think providing some guidance that might even emerge out of um, maybe the educational culture of Yemen in conversation with the educational culture and thinking of the US or California in this one instance uh, would be the structure I have in mind. Uh, do you see possibilities for collaboration in such a situation? Yeah, except my general feeling is the US government and most governments probably want more control than you would be willing to tolerate. Yeah, um, it, it, that's interesting. You know, we haven't hired in some 15 years. And uh, um, these information technologies are very um, code oriented. They're very structured. Uh, so the openness that I'm appreciative and that I think is generative is partly on the wiki side uh, that people can teach and learn openly to a wiki, but different people's um, 
hired by the U.S. federal government might take that in different directions. Yeah. And there's also openness in teaching to YouTube. And did Narjeet Kaur uh, do something very interesting in the Punjabi language? This woman in um, Google Education Group Punjab and Amritsar uh, from north of the north of India in these regards. Did she, was she teaching uh, even as a way to develop her own career, to develop her own thinking, um, her own uh, teaching ideas, whether the US federal government um, funding such as from the State Department could help us pick uh, wonderful teachers like Narjeet Kaur um, is another set of questions. <laughs> this is my thinking in terms of um, possible keeping world university and school creative, getting funding and um, what the US federal government state department might want or might be interested in in some of these regards. I think we'd have to plan for the creativity. What do you think? Hmm. Planning for creativity seems a little difficult. <laughs> uh, 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 interesting. Um, I think of um, the scratch programming language and the creative computing that is coming out of Karen Brennan's thinking, Mitch Resnick's thinking, Karen Brennan at the Harvard Graduate School of Education, Mitch Resnick in, at MIT and wonder um, uh, how that could be applied. Uh, the first course that we're offering for students to matriculate in, see us first with Google at World University and School is all about creative computing. It's project oriented. Students use the scratch language, programming language in English presently, but I think it's in Spanish too, to um, do projects all kinds of projects such as create a little scenario using a figure of speech. Um, lots of creativity there and with the structure of coding. Um, I think it's built into the, the way of thinking there. I'm hoping we can do that further at World University and School on the wiki side. Okay. Yeah, uh, we're down to about 17 minutes, um, have about, Eight to ten more items, and a bunch on the <laughs> we, we on a bunch on the WS Corporation side. Um, you better prioritize. <laughs> I, I think we're doing all right. We have four minutes, four agenda items on the World University and School side, and about six or seven on the WS Corporation side. Um, agenda item ten: WUAS Home Robotics. Uh, there's so many developing fun STEM learning opportunities. Lego Education, which of which were uh, an official carrier of three Lego robotics kits. I just posted a picture of a motorcycle and suggest, asked students or those people who got the kit at home on their own to write code to graph energy consumption and discover how this little Lego motorcycle, how the smart bike gains potential energy in the, this is uphill lesson uh, in spike okay. prime lego robotics uh cool there's another creative um aspect for uh robotics on top of creative computing of scratch um i'm hoping we can develop a whole approach uh with these three lego robotics kits and more for home robotics um will we get help develop modular uh, Toyota humanoid robotics, THR3 humanoid robots uh, that students can also code for with a master maneuvering system in their chair at home, uh, as well as with Lego robotics. Um, maybe. Uh, lots of potential for WS home robotics, creativity wise. Um, agenda item 11. W WS Financial Reports. Thank you again, Larry Vilan, so much for sharing the financial reports, which I sent out with this agenda and news to 
I'm guessing 1,500 people. Okay. <laughs> um, um, so the first uh, part of this is that uh, the state of California on World University and Schools exempt legal entity, which dates from 2010, uh, recently cashed a check for the first check for $65. Okay. And this was, uh, this is momentous um, because it's in a way getting the World University and School exempt legal entity in the Franchise Tax Board going. Um, we also have to figure out the, um, we have to add this legal entity to the new my WS my FTB account generation process. Uh, we talked about that yesterday. Um, any further thoughts about how making the the number from line four on the 2019? <laughs> no. Okay, that one I have no further thought on. <laughs> Did you actually make any progress on that? So I called um, after we talked and. Partly at your suggestion, I called Robert Morgan at the our executive uh, for the WS Corporation and for WUAS at the California Franchise Tax Board and left a, a, a detailed message with both legal entities numbers and describing the issue. Uh, maybe we'll hear back on Monday and Tuesday. What do you okay. think? Yeah. Well, that's all you can do. Okay. Um, Agenda item 12, there's a conference in Boston in late August from Harvard and MIT professor of genetics, George Church in the Harvard Medical School. And it's partly about uh, developing leaders in biotech. Um, and in what ways could world university and school graduates develop leaders in biotech uh, when we get there? Can we train um, students to become entrepreneurs and CEOs and leaders of biotech um, into the future? Uh, it's called the Nucleate Summit. And uh, George Church, who's focusing a lot on aging reversal, genetic engineering, revolution therapies, and science, biology, is a founding advisor. And uh, the conference Nucleate is uh, committed to empower the next generation of biotech leaders. In what, besides heading there, in what ways might it be possible to um, tailor our PhD programs in the biosciences in these directions? Uh, what, what do you think? Well, I think there has to be a, a, a if you will, an advisor for each student. Okay. And so we've got a interest some potential advisors, uh -huh. and then we can look for students to work to guard. Right. I mean, a PhD is not a course. A PhD is a program in which you're working one-on-one -on -one with an advisor. Uh -huh. You really have to keep that in mind. At least the science part of a PhD is like that. Huh. Um, uh, yeah, you, yeah. you don't send anybody out to do library work for a PhD in science. Uh, yeah, it's uh, okay. Yeah, that's um, it, it's interesting. Uh, the anthropology of science might involve more library work, but it could involve ethnographic work in physical laboratories too. Um, but uh, if we could find professors, uh at major universities such as George Church or uh, someone at Cambridge who could advise our PhD students at home as we begin to hire our own faculty. Uh, that's one way to get a teacher advisor, a teacher student um, relationship going. Of course, the hang up there, of course, is money. Yep, yep, um, absolutely. Uh, State of California is finishing the uh, WS My FTB account uh, generation process may open further steps uh, in those regards. Uh, agenda item 13, this is a little bit 
this emerges from a trip to um, a hot springs in east of the Sierra Mountains. And my first large ethnographic book is about a hot springs and it has a focus, an act, a physical digital focus as well, ethnography being an interpretive practice. Um, and there were a number of people in this hot springs, Buckeye Hot Springs on a Sunday morning last week uh, who were from different US agencies, the US Geological Survey, there were some connections to the US Marine Corps, um, and uh, other organizations in California and federally. And a brainstorming idea came to me afterward was in some ways, in what ways, and this is regarding money further, could, could such uh, agencies and organizations collaborate um, to set up World University and Schools Academic Medical Center, even with a warm water cure, and WUAS Longevity Genetics Institute on the Ridge and Canyon 94516. And um, with all of the varied, very various skills that they have uh, from um, building things uh, to information technology to scientists in the US Geological Survey, and even for setting up physical digital experiments with 10, for example, model organisms or species, human, dog, mouse, uh, chicken, honeybee, drosophila fly, and maybe uh, a frog, um, a uh, a yeast species um, and a zebra fish, and uh, all importantly, the, the little nematode worm uh, called C. elegans, um, yep. which is one millimeter. These are, all, yeah. these are all standard biological, if you will, experimental species right. in a beginning biology class. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and throughout some individuals' careers, um, I think the MIT professor uh, Fla Flavel is his name. I heard him in a brain initiative conference um, from the NIH about uh, three or four weeks ago. Is he's an MIT professor focusing on C. elegans for his whole career? Uh, this yeah. one, one millimeter worm one millimeter long worm that also uh, has 302 neuron, uh, neurons, which make up its nervous system or its brain. It's, it lives maybe um, five to 10 weeks. Could we uh, double its lifespan uh, in this WS Longevity Genetics Institute um, to 15 to 20 weeks? Um, these are interesting questions. Uh, agenda item 14, um, how could world university and school begin to hire scientists? Um, and even as many as 2.3 million people over decades. <laughs> <laughs> even a dollar a year wouldn't be uh, something we could afford. <laughs> at, at, at university uh, competitive rates. <laughs> <laughs> <Whoops. laughs> Can the state of California help? Um, uh, could uh, the WS Corporation adding um, uh, partnering with Stanford Mind Pi cryptocurrency on the Silicon Valley long term stock exchange uh, begin to hire with such uh, possible nation states getting their cryptocurrency from California? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long way out. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, going to the WS Corporation. Uh, Lego Robotics, uh, we're carrying three kits. We haven't heard back from them in a while, but we need to get our IT more together. Uh, one question there is, um, would will the, having completed the WS migration journey to wikibase.cloud, um, will Wikidata, Wikibase, Wikimedia, help create our educational services stores in 200 countries. Uh, thoughts about that, Larry? I don't know where it's going. Well, first we have to have customers. Students. And then you can judge what the customers want and respond to that. 
Yeah, yeah. You're trying you're trying to sort of do it without anybody and that's hard to hard to see. You're using the word customers. Yes, uh, students I'd use too. Um, okay, either way, uh, same point. So if they can help with the 200 universities further and even building communities such as in Ghana, um, would Ghanaian students, uh, which I think is a developing country, um, be purchasers of Lego robotics? Um, interesting possibilities, maybe. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's possible, but we got to have them and then we can see what it is they need further and we can respond to it. It, it may be that someone like um, this Wikimedian um, who is from Ghana, whose first language is Dagbani, can help also tailor uh, courses for even Mwende Evande in Cameroon. Um, from a West African perspective, in addition to getting Lego robotics, all from the Wikimedia World University and School migration journey completed to wikibase.cloud uh, in Wikidata. Let's hope. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, A, uh, item B, um, this is a uh, a fairly new idea for, for the WS Corporation. To what degree could we develop a smartwatch, possibly even with Stanford Medicine, uh, with gel electrophoresis, uh, which is the separation of DNA molecules at, um, in a gel with a slight this electrical charge? This is my charge. area of research. Uh, I uh, use gases instead of gels, but it's the same principle. I, I'm, this is exciting. Um, I'm also sharing this for, for um, the record um, to, um, okay. so, um, and combine it with um, sort of this gel electrophoresis process with molecular microelectronics chips or semiconductors, potentially even as uh, the machinery uh, for uh, genetics at the molecular level uh, to uh, recode, resequence it, uh, resequence DNA, and particularly for aging reversal and longevity genetics. And furthermore, this smartwatch connected with uh, even Google Street View with Time Slider and Avatar Bot electronic medical records. Um, Possibly this smartwatch also doing molecular cloning uh, per a George tweet, Church tweet recently. Uh, what do you, do you want to have a hand in this, Larry? <laughs> well, I mean, the reality is at the moment, time is a big consideration in these things. Yeah. So having it in your watch doesn't really help anything. If you could get the time down to 30 seconds instead of 30 minutes, it might make a big difference. The gel electrophoresis process takes about 30 right. minutes. Yeah, it, that's a long time. At least, because yeah. you're gonna do it in cycles. You uh -huh. gotta heat it up, hold it there for a temperature and then cool it down, let it regrow bigger, twice as many, and then heat it up, let it cool down, let it grow. Now it's four times as big and you keep doing this for many cycles. Interesting. Okay? And that, that takes a long time. Yeah. Um, and it's not particularly expensive equipment. Right, and right. It's not particularly large or, or, you know, it always sounds impressive to students and when they see what it is, it's uh, well, that all, it, yeah, that's why it could be a watch, but there's no advantage to a watch at the moment. Well, what I would add to this sort of um, prototype thinking it, it, I mean, if, a, if such a smartwatch could be designed for aging, reversal, and longevity genetics, um, and we no, could no. get, get no, the no, machinery no, no. right. There are two kinds of scientific equipment. One is to do something, and the other is to measure something. When we're talking about a general electrophoresis is to measure something, not to do something. It's not a tool. There, there okay, are some so. very helpful YouTube videos, um, which... Um, reoriented uh, approaches even to learning. One is subtitled, Don't Memorize. Um, 
it was also describing doing something. And it was describing a process of separating DNA molecules into different sequences and strands because of the electricity. My separating has no connection to implying something about genetics. After you separate them, then you gotta go back to thinking about what it is that I could do with them and once they're separated. Great. It also you has understand what I think so. I'm saying to you that the watch can separate them. Then what do you do with them? It, yeah, That's something different. It also has nothing no, nothing at this point to do, um, even if it could become somehow successful machinery uh, for resequencing DNA. It has nothing to do yet with aging reversal yeah. or longevity genetics. That's right. That's right. Uh, but the, the one thing I'd like to add vis-a-vis -vis your speed issue with regard to this brainstorming about a smartwatch from the WS Corporation um, is it would be connected to the internet. And, and the 5G, um, where we are more or less currently, um, probably wouldn't be fast enough either, but it could speed things up too uh, for molecular cloning, for gel electrophoresis, for amazing engineers such as yourself figuring out how to <laughs> turn this into um, a, an aging reversal device with a skin patch uh, from the smartwatch into the body at the wrist. Um, okay. This is, uh, uh, I, I think it's- separated your technologies here. The 5G, 4G stuff on communication, nothing to do with this. I mean- It's the, just a matter of how fast your processor is, has nothing to do with how fast the communication is. I mean, the smartwatch um, uh, with internet connectivity uh, would potentially be able to down, you know, download um, ones and zeros, maybe from our electronic medical records, um, and upload it as well. Uh, and the electric, uh, uh, the avatar bot electronic medical records would potentially again be connected with Google Street View with Time Slider All with right. Pegman. But here we are in our different approaches. You're thinking. A hundred year, what can we do? I'm thinking a hundred months or a hundred days. What is possible now? <laughs> uh, I, I'm thinking how to get both uh, longevity genetics and aging reversal with this new molecular machinery um, of gel electrophoresis into a, a tiny watch connected to the internet. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm glad the Consumer Reports has rated smartwatches. Uh, I don't think any of them uh, have incorporated gel electrophoresis or molecular cloning, no. uh, but they do have internet connectivity. So um, these new smartwatches, uh, interesting. Right. Um, item C, um, bookstores and robot stores. Uh, can we, if we can, Ex, uh, explore ending poverty with universal basic income experiments, universal for all 7.9 billion people on the planet with Stanford Mind Pie cryptocurrency, free money daily in most of 200 countries and speakers of 7,000 languages. Um, we touched on this a little bit last monthly business meeting, but could we anticipate what populations uh, income levels will increase even with artificial intelligence, and then um, plan to open bookstores and robot stores in those regions. Um, I, I think it's a good idea, but what do you think about that? Well, I think it's compounding speculations. And so I agree great if you could do it. I'm just not sure if number one, you can do it. And number one, that we, and number two, that we should do it. Yeah, it's a little premature. Great, interesting. Um, yeah, I think it's a planning thing, and um, uh, I'll, uh, we'll certainly uh, let's keep it on the back burner then. Okay. Um, I know we're a tiny bit over time. Um, the the one further thought I <laughs> wondered about was: Could the humanoid robotics, such as the THR three, um, even be driving a Toyota ProAce electric uh, van um, that's an autonomous vehicle. And could we even get 10,000 of them and put logos on the side? And could 
um, these humanoid robots start delivering packages um, out of the Toyota Proace van, which might be getting 41 miles per gallon equivalent rather than 14 miles per gallon for mid-sized vans. Um, What's the point of having a robot? Good, great, great. Um, all, all the people are doing these electronic or EV research now, they're no longer incorporating a humanoid figure as a robot. They're trying to do it without anything sitting in the driver's seat, which is possible, of course. It's a question of whether the humans will accept it. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, in that we would like to get into robots, um, this might be a focus for developing robots. Uh, we also would like to hire, as I see it, 2.3 million people over decades. Um, and yet, uh, perhaps robots um, for learning about robots and in an educational enterprise um, for not only uh, initial things like deliveries um, and driving autonomous vehicles uh, with humanoid robots such as THR3, um, but also doing much more. Someone sitting in the master maneuvering um, a system chair uh, could help the initial coding of possibly the 10,000 robots. Uh, um, this would be maybe on top of another 5,000 humans driving Toyota Pro Ace electric vans making deliveries is the thinking. Um, I, I think it's, um, there are a lot of directions for uh, humanoid robots and for us to even manufacture them. Um, and that would be an initial thing that a humanoid robot might be able to do and might be familiar um, in all 200 countries even somehow. What do you think? Well, the only thing I do is by argue by analogy. When you first had autonomous elevators, you didn't put humanoid figures in the corner to run the elevators. Yeah. No, okay. I, I great. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you, you skip directly to buttons. And so there's a technology leap that's possible that you're not putting into your discussion here. Sure, that's great. Um, I also think um, that, uh, that mo of the 7.9 billion people on the planet, um, one, more than uh, 1 billion have personal automobiles. Um, and uh, these will become self-driving. Um, whether there's a need for humanoid robotics in the driver's seat is another set of questions, which I think you're asking. Um, That's right. Yeah. Uh, we explored this last monthly business meeting too. Um, could we put a $20 robot in all 7.9 billion people's arms? Um, as a teaching and learning robot. Uh, and would that be teaching and learning about everything from a four year free bachelor's degree well, uh, to um, a music teacher, to um, other skills in society? The um, direction of humanoid robots beyond, for example, the easy goals of a humanoid THR3 robot driving a Toyota Pro Ace van um, that's electric for deliveries uh, for the educational services stores at World University and School of Physical Digital, which are also robotic, is interesting, I think. Um, but I hear you, the back burner, maybe. Uh, OK, <laughs> all right. Great, so thank you. Time. Yeah, um, <laughs> good to talk, Larry. and. Um, uh, hoping that uh, the WS Academic Medical Center with Warm Water Cure and um, WS Longevity Genetics Institute can develop uh, soon, potentially, uh, as well. We'll follow up on that a little bit later with you, I hope, if that's possible, please. Okay. All right. All right. Good to talk. Talk to you later. So long. Bye, Bye. now.